home is across the Blue Ridge Mountains. My home is across the Blue Ridge Mountains. My home is across the Blue Ridge Mountains. And I never expect to see you. This is Rick Polari, and welcome to another chapter in the Songwriter's Notebook. And as you just heard, we're going to take a little trip today from over here in the Green Mountains of Vermont, way down south, to where a lot of this music really started to get its feeling, its roots. And I'm so honored to have some travelers here. We have some, some mighty hard traveling uh, <laughs> folks <Yes>. here. <laughs> uh, they, they've come a long way. Uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, Fred Kuhn uh, and, uh, and Bill Burke. And I've met them over in, uh, out in Arizona. And Bill uh, actually did come from Arizona to come and join us today. Yeah. And, and, and Fred is kind of moonlighting, you know, he has a little place over in Maine now. So he's got his, his foot stuck up in this part of the country. I uh, but I thought it would be really great to, uh, to take some time and learn about the roots of this music because these two are from the true vine as we say. They didn't just learn how to play these songs from reading books or listening to records but they went out and they met with the old masters and learned from them and that's what we're going to talk about today is about learning in that kind of style. And Fred, you know, I think that the, the viewer should get a little idea about place, about where you come from. Um, I come from West Virginia. My family settled there in the early 1800s, having come from Pennsylvania in the early 1700s. Um, my daddy uh, taught me a two-finger style of banjo playing that he learned from Uncle Otis Green over in Boone County. Uh, and he learned it from his father and so forth and so on. Uh, and it is a little unusual in that I can't get all the notes Bill can, and we'll demonstrate that later. But it really was made for singing and for playing uh, certain tunes and, and you can just accompany yourself. But it's, it can be applied to some fiddle tunes too. It comes in two parts. It comes in a drop thumb and it comes in a, a knockdown, but it's not the same claw hammer that other claw hammers play. So let me just start off here with uh, a tune called Bonaparte Crossing the Rhine. Thank you. 
could you just slowly show the folks at home how you're doing that with one if finger? I can. <laughs> because <laughs> I, you know, I, it's a, such an unusual style. I mean, most of us, you know, we, we play more of uh, Bill. You you play more of a, a the, the kind of usual contemporary just style, standard claw hammer, drop thumb right. stuff. Right. And but Fred plays a little bit different, and I, I I think it's really important for the folks back home to understand that there were a lot of different styles of banjo picking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's only the few that that have become popular that we know about, but you know, there's all kinds of styles of double thumbing, you know, picking and three finger picking. It was not just Earl Scruggs. There were Snuffy Jenkins and all these wonderful people, Uncle right. Dave Macon, mm -hmm. who played three style finger picking. Uh, but we only know those few. And I, I think that it's really important for people, people to get the idea of how this was done. Where we lived was very isolated. There wasn't a paved road in 1921 up the holler. So uh, it didn't get out much. It was just there. Um, so you just, uh, you may be able to explain it better than I can, Rick. Well, right now it's a, a kind of a, a double thumbing with an alternating lead. It seems like you're doing some with the thumb and some with the... I dropped the thumb down. That's right. I dropped the thumb down. But you're also doing some of the lead work with your with, index. With my <laughs> yes. yes, that's right. Now, the second part of the style is uh, for a little faster dance tunes and that kind of thing. It's a... That's it. So and that's then you pick out the individual notes. So like it's this. similar to the up picking style yeah. that Pete Seeger did, but a little bit different. And then you just alternate the rhythms and the counter rhythms mm -hmm. as the tune dictates. And what or you, as you like. Yeah, what you can't see where Fred is real sneaky is when it looks yeah. like he's dropping his thumb I'm there. Not. He's actually backing his index finger up. Mm -hmm. and using it as That's a right. flat pick. Mm -hmm. right. So, so it just sort of supports my weak fingernail. <laughs> <laughs> now, would you say that that was a, a, a typical style from, no. you know, no. where, where you were from? No. no. No, this was a family style. Okay. It just, my dad showed me and he learned from Uncle Otis and that's as much as I know about it back through the <laughs> generations. It's just a... Uh, Very just nice. Any, and you can, you can almost like you said with a... Uh, I heard Mike Seeger one time uh, do this kind of thing. But you have to hear a little bit of yeah. <laughs> lick in there. Yeah. That's well, it. Well, I mean, you know, that basketball, Lamar Lunsford had yes. a, a, a style that was a one, a one finger style mm -hmm. that he would kind of hit down and then brush up with the same finger. That also had a different kind of a sound. I got to meet him. He was in the wheelchair at the time, but they rolled him out on the stage in Asheville where we were playing. And it was Frank George and me and Roger Sprung from Connecticut. And there was a... Uh, uh, Peter Gott uh, from North Carolina, and uh, but he, he wheeled out on the stage and they, he sang a tune and they wheeled him back. But I got to meet him. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah, I think that w what we want to try and do is get in, in as as much uh, music as we can and dialogue yeah. as right. well. And and the one thing they have to know about uh, Bill, uh, you know, because Bill is, is kind of you know, he's a little bit shy over here. <laughs> very, very. <laughs> he's a, a wonderful instrument maker, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so his his. Work Work is it really in wood and in sounds and uh, 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 as you can see that the you, you didn't did you fool around with with the uh, with Fred's banjo at all have you done any uh, I've I've done a little tweaking tweaking to keep it running just the way he would like it uh, <laughs> no, but, we, we but have I've made to, some other banjos for him this yeah. one, yes, uh, this is uh, one for Fred. I hunted squirrels under that walnut tree when I was a boy <laughs> on, uh, on the ridge up there at Grass Lick West Virginia where on our farm so that's one of, one of that, your, your... That's your, just a throw together something to take on the road and bang around. Yeah. I got fancier ones. Even. Right. <laughs> and, this, and the mandolin, you, you and made and your I mandolin. I got this mandolin, and I, I just made this in the <clears throat> December, I think, and I wanted to try and make a very simple, nice mandolin. And, and this, this I'm going to tell you a story. Well. He's too shy to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I took him over to Doc's house, right? Doc Watson. Yeah, good okay. friend of mine for 47 years. And I took him over to Doc's house and... <laughs> About five tunes in, old Doc says, can I, can I try that thing, son? <laughs> he 
And who's not going to give Doc a mandolin, right? So he, he hands Doc a mandolin. About five tunes later, Doc hands it back and said, Son, there's not a fierce note in that thing. <laughs> We're hoping Bill makes he good man lives. Yeah, we're hoping he wasn't looking for the first song. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you give us another song? Because we want to we want to hear some music. Why don't you go do some Aunt Jenny? Aunt Jenny Wilson lived on Peach Creek in Logan County, West Virginia. She was a, a wonderful. Uh, Keep going, Fred. Have I got the cord messed up? No, you got the bracket falling off. Well, then put it See, back. See, he fixes it. I'm right telling you, Bill's Bill's on Johnny the job on the right now. He's there fixing that banjo. <laughs> anyway, Aunt Jenny was had a, hundreds of tunes that she knew. Many of them were the old child ballads, and but done in the Central West Virginia style. Here is one, and I'll tell the story very shortly because you know you want a lot of music. Uh, her cousin in 1900 to 1910 ran moonshine out of Mingo County and uh, he got caught up in Logan County and the sheriff who had a piece of the action in Logan arrested him for murder and put him in the Logan County Jail. While he was in jail he sang this song but as Jenny concluded at the end of the song she says and I'll try to do it the way she talked, hit was prove out which means that he was let go. <laughs> so but he wrote this while he was in the uh, uh, Logan County Jail. Come, oh, give me an F, Bill. Thank you. Come, all oh, my young companions, whoever you may be, don't ever drink nor gamble nor keep bad company. What those three things have done for me. It's done for many a man, it's got me here for murder on the banks of old Guyan. They got me here for murder and the case you all know well. They got me in this jailhouse all locked up in a cell. They'll put the handcuffs on me, to Moundsville I will go to labor out my sentence on the banks of Ohio. You'll find me in this dirty old place any day you call around. Held in a large brick building way out on the edge of town. Lies Hatfield is our jailer. He's a true kind-hearted man, but he means to keep his prisoners on the banks of Hogan. They got me here for murder and the case I do deny. To stand the time for such a crime, I'd almost rather die. But they got me in their power and a trial I'll have to stand in this dingy town of Logan on the banks of Ogayan. Last night while I lay sleeping, I had a pleasant dream. I dreamed I was back in Warncliffe with all them boys again. With Bridget Murphy on my knee and a bottle at my command. But I woke up broken hearted on the banks of Ogayan. You know, I think one of the things, Fred, that, that a lot of people don't understand is back in those old days this was this was our newspaper this was a newspaper yeah, it, was. it was the way that people got the news and that's why they had a, a lot of these what they call murder ballads uh, about uh, the kind of things that were going on and I know that that you had it written down you were going to scratch it but I want you to tell just a tiny bit and demonstrate how the Tom Dula can we do that a little later sure I'm in a D minor open tuning okay right now. It'd take too much okay time. no go ahead and we'll so, do another Jenny tune that Sounds most people good. have not heard. Sounds okay. good, do it. Oh, sorry about that, Rick. It's okay. On top of old Smokey, all covered with snow. On top of old Smokey, all covered with snow, I lost my true lover by the cold and too slow. Oh, the courting is a pleasure and the parting is a grief. Oh, the courting is a pleasure and the parting is a grief. And a false-hearted lover is worse than a thief. A thief, he will rob you and take all you have. 
A thief he will rob you and take all you have And a false-hearted lover he will send you to the grave Oh, there the grave decays with you and turns you into dust Oh, there the grave decays with you and turns you into dust And where is a boy that a poor girl can trust? Oh, the courting is a pleasure and the parting is a grief Oh, the courting is a pleasure and the parting is a grief And a false-hearted lover is worse than a thief Yeah Jenny Wilson. <laughs> so can can we, uh, Bill? Did you want to play the guitar on this song and for the sure. for Doc? Well, yeah, just, yeah. just a moment of it. Everybody knows the song. I grew up playing it. Well, why don't you? Th how did you learn it, Bill? Oh, Dave Kippeth and and I in New Haven. I think learned note from note off that. That record that was back then, the one with the nice cover, was it Ralph Rinsler that uh, mm -hmm. did that? Yeah. And uh, we just sort of sped our our youth. And feeling. Yeah, tell now, a doc story. yeah, you should tell a doc story because a lot of people we you know here we 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 know about Doc Watson, but we don't know Doc Watson. All right, I used to drive a '67 Plymouth Valiant with a slant six aluminum engine in it. I took Doc somewhere one time, and about a year later, I come back to the house. Doc's in the backyard. He's got he had an old cellar at the original house. He had a, a root cellar, and he had the two saw horses, and he had the the cellar door off the hinges on the sawhorses with a plane, and he was planing, and he'd feeling, and I came around the side of the house, and he said, hi, Fred, how are you? <laughs> I mean, right? I said, okay, you got me, how'd you know? He said, well, you still have that Plymouth, don't you, and it's still got the ping in the fifth cylinder. <laughs> Lord. Everybody out there knows that Doc was blind. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, let's uh, let's uh, switch over to uh, the banjo over okay. there. There you mm -hmm. go, Rick. What a great sure. guitar. Nice guitar. Oh, no, I ain't not right, Bill. Where were we going, Fred? June Apple. June Apple, okay. Yeah, that's uh, this, this one is really uh, interesting for me because, uh, like many people, when I was <coughs> learning how to do a little bit of claw hammer, June Apple was, was the, the song mm -hmm. that, that really... Uh, that you cut your teeth on, and Wade Ward, he was the hero, and he he was so un, unconventional in some ways that he played a, a full master tone banjo, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And because you know, most people, when they think of playing these old, uh, you know, old time songs, they always have an open back banjo. Well, why would why was he playing that uh, that full master tone? Any idea? That's what he owned. <laughs> But well, he only liked the sound of it, you know. And it, and it sounded great. I remember the first time I went to Galax, to tell you a quick story, then we'll do this. I was young, and I was driving down the street, and the courthouse is on the right toward the ballpark, if you're going out the end of town. And there were four old men. Now, they were older. I'm older than they were. 
at that time. There were four old men sitting out there on the courthouse lawn playing music, and I took my banjo out of the car and went up, and one of them asked me to join me, join them, and I played with them for years after that, sitting on the back of pickup trucks and around for campfires and stuff. My God, it was Wade Ward and, and uh, Tommy Jarrell and Fred Cockrum, and good <laughs> Lord, I mean, it was a gaggle of them, and it was wonderful, and I didn't know who they were. They weren't icons then. They were mm -hmm. mill workers and farmers. You know, he played good music. <laughs> well, you know the old saying, you are the company you keep. Well, so, Fred, you started at, started with the right crowd. I sure did. Thank you. And I joined in with Reed Martin and Rick Lee and Ralph Lee Smith right. and Alan Block and that oh, Rick, yeah. northern uh, end of things. Reed Martin's a good band picker. Oh, yeah. he's good. Um, Bill's style, we, we talked about it earlier, and Bill's going to play the... Um, He's going to play the old time drop down thumb uh, claw hammer style on this, and then I'm going to play my family style on it, and then we're going to see. You can see how it sounds together, and if you were just listening, you probably couldn't tell much difference in it, but if you're a banjo picker, you you would. So yeah, you realize that Fred's hand is going in the wrong direction right. all the time. The time. He goes up, I <laughs> Folks, you're, you're watching these guys and you're saying, boy, you know, I'd like to know more about them. And, and I think that uh, you have a good website, don't you? Yes, we do. And what is it? www.oldtimeymusic.com. Oldtimeymusic.com. One word. And they, they travel around, as you can see there, you know, they, they made their way all the way out here to, to uh, Burlington. And uh, so if you want to know more about their music, the recordings that they made, uh, some information about where they're going to be, because uh, I think that uh, now that they've come, come this far north, uh, you know, that they want to keep coming back. We had a wonderful party last night with friends, and, and everybody loved nice uh, loved uh, listening to their music and joining in and playing together. And that that's what this music is, folks. Uh, as you can hear from this conversation we've been having, unlike a lot of the popular music where performers are are, are cloistered away uh, from the audience, that's not what what we're all about. This is a music that's been handed down from one generation to the next, from one friend to the to the next. Uh, you you, you got to tell them just, just that quick little story about you riding down the road and seeing uh, Earl Scruggs' oh. bus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I, I was going to play it to talk. But, all right, when Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs uh, recorded, they did it in Nashville for the Martha White Hour. But when they did their uh, uh, Appalachian run they used to go to Ashland Kentucky and do the do a show from there and they I was there's a, a two-mile stretch on Route 60 in Huntington West Virginia where I went to school 
And uh, I was coming, my parents had bought a, this is an important part of the story, Rick. My parents had bought a 1964 Peugeot 404 Sunliner, by God. And it was modern, because you could crank this thing in the roof, yeah. So the I'm going, there's this up. old bus in front of me, and just about the time I hit the two mile stretch, I'll get past these guys, I want to get home. I pull up and I look on the side and it said Lester Fratt and Earl Scruggs, the Martha White Hour, you know. <laughs> so I reached in the back seat because I was never without a banjo. And I grabbed the banjo and I stuck it up out the roof like that and I'm waving it like a madman, right? And the bus driver's laughing his butt off. So he motions like this and up to the front of the bus comes Lester Flat, Earl Scruggs, Paul Warren, Chubby Wise, right? And Scruggs had a grin as wide as my banjo head. And he motioned me over to the side of the road and he got out and he said, by God, son, anybody that determined, I'll sign their head. And he signed my band <laughs> head right down on the side of the road. <laughs> well, give us a tune. All right. We're going to do, um, uh, how much time do we have? We don't right? have too much time. So All right. Let's close out with, um, if we're going to close out. Well, we've got a few more. Just, I think we can get two more tunes if you do them quick. Okay. okay. I'll tell, this, has to, this story has to be told. No stories, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ernie Carpenter wrote this after they flooded out his house with the Sutton Dam. <laughs> and this was the first night on the house in the new porch after his family had been run out after 1700s on the old farm by eminent domain. <laughs> Called the Elk River Blues. say goodbye to our good friends who came all the way out from Arizona. Thank you guys. Thank you, man. Great.